Hello, this is Mrs. Rowe, and I'm here to show you how to turn your pinch pot into an animal. Get your pinch pot, a piece of canvas, so your clay doesn't stick to the table, and you're gonna need some extra pieces of clay, a toothpick so you can scratch and score, and some water so you can create slip. It's also a good idea to have your plans nearby. If you didn't have time to make plans, that's okay, but you should have an idea of what animal you'd like to make before you begin. So I think it's a good idea to start with a basic head because usually in this project, it tends to be the heaviest part and then you can balance the legs later, especially if they are coming off the bottom of your pinch pot either way. So you're going to start with a piece of clay and you don't want it too thick. So if you're just creating a round ball for the head, you don't want the clay too thick because it needs to fully dry before I can put it in the kiln to fire it. And also the thicker the clay is, the more chance for it to get a bubble in it, which would not um, survive the kiln fire. So you're gonna start by rolling the ball of clay if you wanna make the head round. Um, and you can squish that bowl of clay to make it more of a pointed shape. If you want a dog's head that's pointed, a horse, even a rabbit would have this sort of pointed shape and I just did that by pinching one end of it. If you want it more circular, thinking like maybe you're making a turtle or a little cat, maybe you want a rounder shaped head and you can just roll a ball of clay like this or right on your piece of canvas. So think about where you want the head before you attach it and then you're going to score and slip. So scoring and slipping is something you need to do for every single detail you attach or it will fall apart. So think about using a toothpick to score. Scoring can be done in many ways and adding the slip can be done in many ways. But the way we're gonna do it is just by using the simplest materials we can find. So you can do it anywhere. Um, so scoring is just another word for scratching. So you wanna scratch the area you're going to attach where it's going to stick. Think about your clay like Velcro and you want it really rough where it's going to touch. So if I'm attaching the head right on the side, which I think is the most challenging part or spot to attach, I'm gonna really scratch that edge up and get it really rough. The more rough, the better. Then I'm going to add slip. So slip is just wet clay. And I've actually had some pieces of clay sitting in here that were extra, so it's starting to turn into slip, but you can just use straight water, which is actually floating here on the top. Um, so the way you add slip in our class is just by getting the clay wet because it will start to turn into slip right away. Um, so just dip your finger into the water one little bit, add it to one side, dip the fin your finger in the water for the other side, and attach it quickly before it dries. You also want to double check to see if it's extra rough, and if it's not, if it's gotten smoothed over, quickly re-scratch it, double check if it's still wet, on both sides, add some extra water, and then attach it. I like to press it down, make sure you're holding the side so it doesn't squish your pinch pot, and wiggle it a little bit, and then you can use your finger to smooth out any extra scratches you don't want showing. So after you've attached the head to your pinch pot animal, it's a good idea to start thinking about attaching the legs or making the legs to attach. Think about starting with the largest details and then working towards the smallest ones. So remember, the legs can be coming out from any side of your animal. I'm just going to show you how to attach them on the bottom here and on the edge here, depending on your design. So if you wanna make four even legs, you wanna make sure that you get pieces of clay that are even. Now if you want to add a little bunny tail, this is a great way to attach something like that or little round bear ears. You can make it smaller, a little round nose would be cute. Um, but we're going to turn these into small coils. A coil is a snake of clay and the way you make it is by rolling. So usually you roll a coil with two hands, but since these are really small, you're going to need to roll them with one. Another way you can roll a coil is by rolling it in your hands back and forth. 
make that little snake of clay. And now that I have all four here, I can flatten the ends because typically they can get a little pointed or sometimes they can. So it's a good idea to flatten them out so that you have a nice surface to attach and then a nice spot for it to balance. So do that for all four. The biggest thing to look for is an even length and not too long and too thin because then it won't balance. So these, I am very confident, will be easy to balance and to attach because there's flat surfaces on both sides and they're about as um, even in length as I could make them. Now again, I need to plan where I'm going to attach them. So I'll show you both ways. Um, if you're attaching them on the bottom, you're going to scratch where you want the leg. And if the head is here, you might not want to lay it upside down depending on how wobbly it is. So you can turn it over while you scratch the leg, get them both wet, and then attach. I like to press down and sort of wiggle it also to really make sure it's secure. And then you can smooth it out. If you want them on the bottom like this, you do this for all four. Remember, I'm not attaching them, I'm just showing you where they'd go because when the clay dries, it shrinks and it will fall apart. So do not just stick them on because it won't stay, even if you think it will today. Once you have all four legs attached, just make sure they're stuck on there. And then you're gonna turn your animal over and see how well it can stand. If it's having trouble standing, um, one way to make it a little more sturdy is to widen the legs like this. So maybe it's not, maybe the legs aren't even and they're not balancing as well. So making them a little wider rather than more narrow makes them a little stronger and more sturdy. So once you're happy with the animal standing, then you can work on the smaller details. Now I'm gonna show you how to attach them to the edge of the pot um, instead of the bottom. A quick way to save a little time is to score the pieces first that you need and then to add slip one at a time so that you don't have to keep picking up that toothpick so much. Once you have the legs attached, again, you can turn your animal over and see how it stands. After you add your main details, you're ready to add the smaller details. If you would like an animal to have a long tail, you want to make sure that it's not so long that and skinny that it will break off easily. So for example, if I wanted this tail in here, maybe this is turning into an armadillo, and I would like to attach a tail, remember tapping it so you have a flat surface to attach is helpful. If you'd like it to have that long tail, this is a little risky. It might stay, but um, it could break, especially when you take it home, because it's very fragile. So one way to do that where it won't break is by finding another spot where you'd like it to stay. Scratching both areas, scoring, creating slip with water, and sticking that on there. And that's gonna be a lot stronger than just leaving it, and it still looks really nice and has that detail. Another way to add small details is by pinching. Some students find this easier than others, but you can always try. So again, like I said, if you wanted a longer face to your animal, you could kind of pinch it to create sort of a triangular shape, and that makes your animal look like a different, you know, gives it a different form to look like a different animal. Um, you can also pinch small details like ears. And the way I do that is by squeezing. And I don't do it too hard, I do a little at a time. So I do it in one direction, and then I can do it in the other direction to make it more round. And then once I have the general size, I can sort of smooth that out and press down so it's not as lumpy. So this is a great way to add tiny little ears, cat ears, even bunny ears if you do it a little more back and forth without having to score and slips or scratch and attach because it is from the same piece of clay, it is not going to fall off. 
The very last details you want to add are um, anything with a texture, the eyes, anything really small. So do that with a toothpick. And I would smooth out any big areas first with your fingers. Then add my final details using a toothpick so I can press in to create little holes. Those are nice for eyes. If you want little dots for eyes, you can also scratch around to create little details. If you want it extra nice, you can smooth it out after you scratch it in. The very last thing you wanna do is make sure the legs are going to stay on, especially if it's balancing with the legs. See, this one has started to fold in. There's a little crack here. So I wanna make sure it's 100%. If something's falling apart that much, I might wanna really scratch it, score it up, and add some slip to repair that. If your animal just is not balancing on its legs and you're getting really frustrated, one way to fix that problem is just by bending those legs and changing the direction. Maybe it's laying down instead so you aren't frustrated by trying to make it balance. When you're 100% happy with your animal, make sure you carefully pick it up Hold it in your hand, watch where you're going, don't bump into anyone else, and gently place it on top of your name on the tray for it to dry. If you don't end up finishing, I will tell you where the tray is I'm going to keep wet so you can put the animal on that tray so I can um, cover it up and let you work on it again next week.